Hey folks, it's Andrew Kilpatrick here, and let me show you K Pattern Edit Web Edition. So way back in 2011, we released the K Pattern Edit software, which was available for Windows and Mac. Uh, but as time goes on, things change, and it becomes harder to keep all these little apps up to date. We've decided to embrace the Web MIDI technology, which is a new standard that is currently supported in Chrome and Opera browsers as of early 2018, I guess. When you first go to the web page, uh, there's a link from our site to this page, uh, you will get a pop-up message that you have to allow uh, the site to control your MIDI devices. Um, and this is sort of a security thing so that websites don't just take over your MIDI hardware. Um, you may have to go into the settings for Chrome and other browsers have other setting panels and so on. You need to make sure that this is turned on so that we can use system exclusive messages. Um, if this is not on, the application won't work. So when you first go to the page, you'll get a pop-up like this that says, KilpatrickAudio.com wants to use your MIDI devices. And when you say, allow, you'll notice that down here there's a little drop-down box that appears and it has a list of all your MIDI devices in it. So basically to use this program you need to have Chrome or Opera you, or some other web MIDI enabled browser. You also need to have a MIDI interface connected to your computer and you need uh, obviously a pattern generator and some sort of MIDI interface like the K-MIDI module so that you can get MIDI into the pattern generator. So I'm just going to do a quick run through of the basic features and then you can experiment on your own. Okay, so we have an actual pattern generator here and I've been playing around with some of the different patterns. So let's say we want to edit one of the patterns. We will go choose the pattern that we want if we want to be able to see it on the actual pattern generator in real time. Um, so that looks like pattern number five. So when you click here, you'll see it has a little box showing you which one you're editing. Select the MIDI port. In my case, I have a UM1 uh, MIDI interface connected to the module. And when you load this page, it will load the factory defaults uh, automatically, but you can load and save local files to and from your hard drive uh, if you want to keep your own patterns stored you know, offline and so on. There's no cloud functionality at this point, um, but anyway, if you want to load and save, you can do it like that, and it will prompt you for a file, or it'll save uh, the current settings, the current patterns, to a file in your downloads folder. So if you just want to, let's say we would just want to edit number five here, so we can clear it, and we can either click or click and drag to draw some stuff. And when we're happy with our, our uh, pattern, we can click actually to turn on and off the steps like this. But when we're happy, we want to send it, we just press send pattern. And you'll see that the pattern generator will now have that pattern. Um, if you want to send an entire bank, that will send all 32 of the patterns that you've currently got loaded in the browser. If you send, uh, send bank, it takes a little while, so we have a little progress thingy that goes across here. And now all these are now loaded into the pattern generator. If you want to reset, because you're like, oh no, I've made some mistakes and I just want to restore to the factory defaults, just press reset patterns and then send the bank again, and it will send all the factory patterns back into your pattern generator. Um, motions are a little bit similar, but a little different. The motions show a preview of how the motion will go, and the brighter the dot, the more times the ball will land on that, on that space. So let's start with this one. If we clear this, we just get a, sp a space in number one. If we now click, we can build up our motion. So if I click multiple times here, you'll see it stays there for multiple steps. And if I then send this motion, 
Now it's sent, and if I, here, I'll turn it all the way up so you can see, and if I, so now it's running the, the motion that we made. There are two scales, major and minor, which are shown on the front panel. This is one octave worth of semitones per column, and there are eight columns. The notes are automatically transposed into different octaves. You can't affect that. But what you can do is you can clear them. They will all clear to the lowest pitch, and then you can choose the order of the notes in the semitones. And same thing, just send the scale, and it will update right away. So that's pretty much it. It's pretty easy to use. Let me know if you have any issues with it or if you have ideas on how it could be better. And uh, thanks for watching.